Never come back from Copperhead Road Hey friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes and a lesson today for Copperhead Road. So thanks to all of you who sent this song in by request. I had never heard it before and I'm very happy to know it now. So I'm going to show you how to play it. I'll show you the sort of full way to play it, right? We're in standard tuning. Right? It's a little bit tricky. You got to do some pinky stretching. Right? And some targeted strumming. Make sure you get those right strings there. But I'll also show you a way you can do this with just one finger, right? And what I mean, what I mean by that is that the spirit of this riff is this sort of melody, which comes from the mandolin on the album version of this song. Okay? With one finger, just one finger sliding up between the second, fourth, and fifth fret, you can kind of fake this song. So I'll show you that too. It's a good way to sort of get started, uh, get your feet in the door without having to worry about a lot of the stretches and the tougher stuff that you might want to learn for sure. But anyway, uh, we're going to dive on in and I'll show you all this stuff. So here's the agenda. I'm going to talk about, you know, talk about the chords you'll need, talk about the sort of uh, little tricks you do with the D chord, the hammer on, you know, the pinky stretching, some of this um, riff stuff, the one finger version, the full version, and I'll talk about strumming and all that stuff as well. So I'm going to cover it all. Jump ahead if you're looking for something in particular. And remember, my website has all the tabs and notes you'll need for this song. And I also have a link to a PDF printout, which is uh, sort of formatted by me to be very print friendly and well put together. So outside of these videos and glowing screens, the paper will do you well um, and uh, hopefully help you learn this song. So, so with that said, let's uh, zoom on in and get to this lesson. All right, y'all. So let's start this off by looking at the chords we're going to need, right? Because it's only three chords and uh, they're going to cover most of what we need, they'll cover everything we need for this entire song. And in fact, you're gonna be on the D shape for most of the time anyway, but I really wanna just set the, the lay of the land here. So the chords are gonna be a D major, okay? Okay, regular D major, um, a G, you know. Uh, you're not gonna play it that often, so you can either do it you know, like that, or like this, or you can leave the B string open, and then you'll need a C, okay? Now, I want to move ahead because there's a lot of nuance to each of these chords that in certain ways simplify it all, right? And specifically for this D chord, most of the time you're only going to want to play the second, third, and fourth string. And I mean that starting at the thinnest string, right? The second, third, and fourth string, okay? So, so that's open, um, open fourth string, second fret on the third string, and third fret on the uh, second string, right? So this is kind of like, I refer to this as a power chord in my PDF, and, and the reason I do that is because you're not really playing that, this F sharp. This is what makes the D chord a major chord in this shape, right? If you get rid of that note, it's kind of just the root and the fifth, so it's, a, it's technically a power chord. It's more neutral, and I think there's a lot of drive to it, right? And it, it keeps the song from sounding too bright and cheery, because that's not what kind of song this is, right? Now, in the mandolin part you hear in the very beginning of the song, you do hear the F-sharp note, right? Put that, put this song on and listen for that sort of very high, um, cheery sounding note. That's there, but most of the time, you can just play it with these two fingers, right? Index finger here, uh, index finger on the third string that is, and then a uh, ring finger there. Okay, now I'm spending a lot of time here because you're gonna need this chord uh, quite a bit. I'm gonna come back to the G and the C a bit later, but let's look at this riff now, this D riff, okay? So the first part of this is you're gonna wanna be able to get good at hammering on your uh, index finger here on this second fret of the third string. And by hammering on, what that means is you want to be able to, if you were to pluck the third string by itself, and then you were to bring your index finger down forcefully, if you do it right, it kind of makes like, it changes the note, right? Even though you're only plucking it once with your picking hand, you're creating like a second sound with this note. So if you're strumming it, right, uh, it would be like this.
this isn't a, uh, a necessary part of playing this song, but it's a good thing to practice, especially if you want to capture the nuance you hear in the, the sort of Steve Earle version of the song, okay? So that's one bit I'm gonna reference quite a lot here. But now let's look at this riff. I'll say this, you can play this entire riff with just one finger if you want to be super simple about it. You can just look at the um, fourth string and third string. And all we're gonna do Right? That's sort of the melody you hear of the mandolin when you're hearing the album version of the song, right? In context, it's like this. Right? One more time. Okay, that's uh, the full riff, a little bit sloppy there. But what you can just do again is... You can sort of start off with just this one finger version. And I say one finger because it's really, I'm just kind of using my left index finger to go from the second fret to the fourth fret to the fifth fret. That's all I'm doing with my left index finger. The rest of the time, I'm just playing this fourth string open all the time. Okay, that's basically um, the, the melodic part of the riff, okay? Um, and if you want to practice the hammer-ons like that, you can. Okay, so that's one thing you might want to do just to get the spirit of the riff, right? To kind of hear the melody part. And then what we're going to do is bring in the rest of our hand to fill out some of these notes a little bit. The thing I'll say is that with this D chord, you know, while we're sort of doing that melody I just showed you, we're, we're not gonna do it with one finger. We're actually gonna use our pinky finger a little bit here. And that's tricky, but it's a valuable skill to have because it really lets you add a, a bit of, of nuance to your playing, okay? So this is one thing you're gonna have to learn. It's how to do this, this D chord with this pinky stretch. Now, if you haven't done this before, this can seem like maddeningly tough because I, like lots of times you're like, how are you gonna do that, right? It's like your, your D's here and how are you gonna get your pinky all the way down there? It's really a matter of, um, I did an entire lesson just on this topic of, of the D chord and doing these pinky stretches, right? Lots of songs you do this. Um, basically, there's a couple keys. One is that you wanna keep your hand, instead of being like rigid and tight, you know, I use this like oak tree analogy. You don't want to be like a sturdy oak tree that's unwilling to bend. You want to be like a reed or a willow or something where you're kind of, your, your fingers are on the, the notes you need to hit, but your hand is sort of bendy and malleable. And you actually want to have, have, kind of have your hand like this. So I would say, you know, get used to just doing, put your index finger there on that third string, second fret, and get used to doing this. That's the first step. Okay, with your pinky. And then once you get comfortable with that, then you can sort of bring your index finger down on that third fret of the second string. And don't even worry about your index, your, uh, your middle finger here. If you want, you can put it on the full D shape. That makes it a little bit tougher to play. Okay, but I bring this up again, because you're gonna need this when you're playing the full riff here. So let's look at the full riff. Okay, so the full riff, basically, it's gonna start off, we're doing a strum of the D chord, and you can or cannot play the uh, F sharp note on the thinnest string, it's up to you. And on that first uh, strum of the chord, you're gonna wanna keep your index finger off and then hammer it on. Then do a second strum, right? So it's two strums right there. One, two, one, two. And on the one, I'm hammering on my index finger. Now, the next part. The melody is. But with the strumming, what I'm gonna do is just kinda get, right? I'm really just focusing on the third and the fourth string there. Maybe the second string too. Even if I'm sort of um, muting the second string, I'm not playing it, right? Check this out. And if 
you want to take it slow, you can do all down strums. Do real slow, right? Okay, and you can do the hammer on, or you can like lay off the hammer on. It's up to you. All right. So that's that first part of the riff. I'm calling that part one here in my tab, right? That's something you want to get really comfortable with because some, lots of times you're playing this riff and you're just staying on the D chord and you go to part one. Right, so I'm just doing that part one of the riff and I'm sort of freely doing the D and freely hammering on. I'll, I'll show you the verse in a little bit, and that's uh, what you do. Now, part two of the riff, what we're going to do, I think the easiest way to do this is basically what I showed you before. We're going to use our ring finger, though, and go to the fifth fret. So it's fifth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret, open, second fret, okay? You can do ring finger, ring finger, ring finger, middle, open, index, or you can do ring, you can slide down with your ring finger and do open to the index finger. You could use your pinky if you want to. Okay, um, and then again, bring in the droning fourth string. And then for extra credit, what you can do here is in the tab, you see I have like the first and second string, I have an X on those strings. What that means is those strings are muted. So I could just do, strumming the thinnest four strings, but because of, they're muted, which means I just have some, these fingers are lightly touching these strings. So they're not, if I'm pushing down, it's gonna make a sound, but if I just lightly, I, I push down the third string, and I just lightly touch the first and second string, okay, it, it lets me sort of get a full sound, like four strings worth of, of plucking even though only the fourth string and the third string are making the noise. So basically, whoops. Now, when I'm down to the open third and fourth string, I kind of want to keep just the third and fourth string is what I'm playing there. Right? can do the hammer on if I want. All right? All right, that's part two. So part one and part two in full sound like this, right? One additional thing is if you want to get a little bit more advanced, what you can do is on this string right here, you can put your uh, index finger down, third fret, second string. And then um, when you go to, to the from fifth to fourth on the third string, you keep your index finger here. So. What that does, basically this is a D note. The same way that your open fourth string is a D note. They're an octave apart. Doing this basically is harder, but it gives you more of that droning sound that really defines this song largely. You hear, I don't know if it's a bagpipe or something, but in the, the album version of the song, you hear that droning D note from the very opening you know, measures of this song onward. So. Um, that's the last thing I'll say about that, that little riff right there. So now you have the riff. Okay, so let me show you how to take the riff and uh, take these other chords, the G and the C, and then put them together for the entire song. Okay, so, um, you know, we look at the song, right? Look at the first couple verses, or the first verse and the first chorus. The verse is just all D, okay? But basically what we're gonna be doing is just,
Okay, so we want to get used to just doing a down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down. My name's John Lee Whittemore. Same as my daddy and his daddy before. You hardly even saw again daddy down here. Came around about twice a year. Okay, um, I can't sing as awesome uh, as Steve Earl does, but it's kind of the idea, right? Now the chorus, um, we're going to do a G, right? Uh, I like to do it with my ring finger and uh, middle finger on the thinnest two strings, thickest two strings, because that lets us go to the C pretty easily because these two fingers are just going from the, the sixth and fifth string to the fifth and fourth string. And then you really want to make sure this note sounds loud on your C, all right? So the revenue man wanted granddaddy bad, headed up the hollow with everything he had. It's before my time, but I've been told I never come back from Copperhead Road. Okay, so um, that's basically, that's the chords you'll need for the verse and chorus. I'm going to talk about strumming next. The strumming I'll say that I like to use for this one is this pattern, okay? So we're going to be going 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and go down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. I recommend practicing that without any chords in your left hand at first. So for the verse, that would be just on the D, right? Um, and I'm going to do a hammer on on the three count and on the four count. Okay, that hammer on, right? So down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Um, it's a bit less, I think in the verse you can kind of just pick a simpler pattern if you want. It's really the chorus where that comes a little bit more uh, distinct because you are changing chords, right? So the G, you know, down, down, up, down, up, C, to G, to D. The G, to C, to G, to D. One more time. Down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down. from Copperhead Road. carried away sometimes playing this. So that last part I did there, or I, how I started that was the sort of like interlude power chord strumming where you go down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, right? And it's on the D chord. And you can do the full D if you want, or you can do the power chord D. That's down, up, down, up, down. And I'll say this. On the two E count, the, the the count right after the two, you want to kill all the strings, kill the sound, right? Down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. And by kill, I just mean you want to bring your palm into the strings to kill the sound, right? So that's what sort of um, that part in the in the after the chorus when everything rocks out. That's the down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Then you go into the full verse, uh, I'm sorry, the full riff, and you just let it rock, right?
Okay, so, um, yeah, great, great energy in this song. So that's basically what you're gonna need. So that's that's the uh, the strumming pattern you'll need. Again, just the down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, never come back from Copperhead Road. This song keeps wanting to pull me away and just get lost in it. So, you know, again, the notes and tabs are at my website, so check them out, and they're a great way to follow along here. And I hope this was helpful for you. I'll say that the last thing I didn't really show, but I have in my notes and tabs here, is with a G and the C, you can just do a regular G and C like I showed you, right? Or what you can do is you could do like a G to a C add 9 to a G, right? What you lose is this note lose that sort of high C up here, but it's kind of easier to do. All right? That's a G and a C add 9 and a G. And the great thing about these is that these two fingers are staying on the same notes for both those chords. Okay? You also could have some fun if you want to do like, you know, second, third, and fourth string. This is a G, and this is sort of pulled out of this chord, right? The, the, the E shape or the F shape G chord. I'm just playing the second, third, and fourth string. That's the G, and the C is just like an A, just second, second, second fret on the second, third, and fourth string up here on the fifth, right? But I'm just doing that by barring my ring finger. You also could do, that gets in the realm of like copying the mandolin a little bit, right? Seven, eight, seven, two, nine, eight, eight, right? This is a G and this is a C. So. So if you have, you know, a buddy or two playing this with you, one of you maybe can do that. great way to sort of add just some variety so you're not playing the exact same thing, right? Um, yeah, that's basically it though. I think uh, this should give you what you need to, to rock with this song. I hope this helped you and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. But this has been uh, David Potts with Song Notes. Remember, check out my website, playsongnotes.com. Thanks to all of you all who support me through my tip jar and through Patreon. It really, uh, it really is inspiring and helpful. Um, it means a lot, keeps the lights on, and it really encourages me to keep going with these lessons. Uh, so thank you guys so much and uh, have fun with this song. Last thing I'll say is if you have not heard Tyler Childers, uh, the song White House Road, it's a song from the last few years, but it's like very much in the spirit of just Steve Earle and that kind of country, uh, raw backwoods, kind of like up to no good-ish kind of stuff. Energy is captured in that song. It's also in the key of D. Um, it's a drop D song, but it has a great, great sound. It's some, somewhat similar, but, but stands on its own. So that's my recommendation. I'll put the link in the comments or the description of this video. But thanks for watching, y'all, and uh, have a great night. Bye-bye.